are you somebody who feels like Nash, I know that God has put things inside of me. Some may say, I know that there's more inside of me. Um, I'm a mom or I'm I'm a teacher. I'm a, I'm a single. I'm a wife. I'm a this. But there's something inside of me I can't shake. I've tried to even put it in a box and say, not right now, but it's bugging me. Or do you feel like everywhere you go, this thing keeps annoying you? You're like, why don't people understand that this is so simple? Why are people not, you know, in my case years ago before I started Set Apart Style, which is my passion project, I had this burning desire to to see faith and fashion merge together. For me, it didn't make sense. Is it why when you come to Christ, did it feel like, this is years ago, but it felt like as soon as you came to Christ, you weren't allowed to be fashionable. Because you're now in Christ, you just had to, I don't know, be stripped back, the colours you bought, I don't, something about it felt uh, and it irritated me. Where other sisters or women in faith could have just been like, oh, okay, whatever. I was burdened by this thing where it's like, no, there is actually a way. And I didn't know it was at that time something that God had actually put on my heart to become what it set apart style has become or what it is today. But I just had this burning desire inside of me. And so I just wanted to use this video to encourage you. If like me, you have any of these signs going on inside of you within your life, to not ignore them, but to listen up because it could just be the Holy Spirit speaking to you. God is trying to let you lean in so that you can actually fulfill what he has put inside of you for the kingdom. So number one, you can't stop seeing the problem. I'm always reminded with Moses. Moses was an Israelite, but he was, I guess, adopted by Pharaoh's daughter and then looked after by his mom. See the Bible. But he was an Israelite who was being raised as an Egyptian. But though he was being raised as an Egyptian, there was something in him that didn't feel like, oh, I'm better than the Israelite. Like, I'm, I've am i made it. Because later on when he's an adult, when he saw an, an uh, Egyptian being harsh to an Israelite, what did Moses go and do? <laughs> Moses went and he killed a man. And because he killed a man, he got in a lot of trouble. But what stood out to me is the fact that it bothered him, the way the Israelites were being treated. Though he was an Egyptian, it wasn't like it doesn't bother me. Something about him, it irked him. But he didn't know that he was going to be used much later as part of God's plan to deliver the Israelites out of slavery. I say that because that's sometimes how I've seen the Holy Spirit move in my life and in life of others, where he puts such a heavy like a righteous indignation something in you that bothers you others are like yeah it's a problem but oh somebody will fix it whereas you feel like no i need to get my hands dirty on this thing like why don't people understand this about scripture or why don't people in the culture understand that like single moms also need to be looked after or why is it people don't understand the importance of like making sure children are actually safeguarded in a particular way like you have something in you that just can't shake mine just happened to show up in the case of like fashion and beauty I didn't understand or it bothered me that there was a Congolese way of being beautiful there was a, a westernized British way of being of being beautiful but then it was like there was a kingdom way that I felt like was not being explained to me and when the Holy Spirit started taking me on that journey and God started to unravel to me that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made and what does that truly mean not just oh, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made but what does that mean that he knit me together in my mother's womb as I started to unpack that it opened up this world this whole world for me where I suddenly was like wow okay more women need to know this in it couldn't I couldn't shake it so that's number one for me it's when you can't shake it it's like you don't just see it as a problem that's just in the world in society it's a problem you feel like what can I do to help that's number one number two I think timing is important even with Moses again it wasn't until he was much older he was married he had a family he had completely gone to Midian he was living his best life until God called him in his older years. So I do think timing is very important. But you also see people in scripture that are called from a young age. You see people like Timothy who was leading. But he was speaking to Paul. Who was his uh, get the person discipling him. Some could say mentor. Others would use language like spiritual father. I would just say somebody who was like a type of mentor to him. Somebody who Timothy looked up to and helped him in his journey in, his, in, in faith. By saying that, he was still told to be an example, you know, in his conduct and in the way that he did things. So you see Timothy. Um, but for me, it's not about you have to be old or you have to be young. It's whenever God calls you, but you have to be sensitive to God's timing. I remember being so pressed 
in my early 20s to do this fashion and faith blogging thing and it was so brand new the church like that I always saw people were serving within the four walls of the church and there was me all the way back there God asking me and pulling me out to do something on the internet and it was like I'm not trying to bring attention to myself I really wasn't but I felt this heavy burden like I need to be online and I remember speaking to the person who was discipling me at the time and she was like yeah I could see why God would do that I was thinking no I thought she was going to rebuke me and be like you're being carnal but no she affirmed me and encouraged me and because I trusted that she was putting my life in that season as somebody to help guide me and stuff I really did take heed to her word knowing that God was using her to encourage me so that's number two in terms of timing and getting the timing right so if you feel that thing of like the pressing is now you're hearing words whether it be prophecies or wherever it just be everywhere you go you keep seeing a, a reoccurring issue and it, you can't shake this thing you need to pay attention because it could be God telling you it's time for you to arise and it's time for you to stop playing small and stop just saying yeah God's put this thing in my heart one day one day but this could be the season because there are people who are connected to your obedience number three the third thing that i'll say that you need to really watch out for to see if this is god is the word i hear god speak to me a lot through the word i'll be reading and be like holy spirit help me as i'm reading this word and god will speak to me through the text that's why i'm speaking about moses because god spoke to me through moses and it really ministered to me um to see like wow your obedience even in your older age even if you feel like yeah but i don't have the words because that's what that's what Moses was saying, like, what would I say, I, like, I don't have the words, I, I, I'm a man who stutters, like, but God affirmed him, God then showed him a sign with the staff, and it's becoming a serpent, and taking it back, like, there was all these things that God was doing to affirm him, and make sure that he was confident as he walked out, so I do believe that that's an important thing, to, to go before the Lord, in the word, go before him, and let God be your boldness, let God be your confidence. If you feel a bit insecure about it, you're a bit, I'm not sure, I feel a bit anxious about it, go to the throne of grace. Go to the place we receive mercy. Go to the place where you say, God, I'm falling short. I remember feeling like, but not, like, God, I don't really have money like that. I was a student. And not only that, it was like, I don't really shop at like, like places with big labels and like luxury fashion, though I like luxury fashion, but I don't have a lot of it. And I didn't have it and at the time. Um, I was more of a just like I'll buy anything from anywhere and I'll make it become what I want it to be. I love couture fashion, like me, fresh couture runway. Yes, that's me. But my day to day, what I was doing didn't really require couture fashion. And not only that, couture fashion is expensive. And I was like, well, we're gonna make it couture, okay? So a lot of the times, the creativity came from that place, and then I would showcase that here on the internet. But I'm sharing all of that to say that sometimes you may feel like I can just see my shortcomings, but God can see what it could become when you partner with him, which is something that I'm going to go to number four is something that I've now really been trying to walk in, even in this season with a new venture, I'm walking in it of don't be afraid to bring your two fishes and your five loaves of bread to God. God can do more with your two fishes and your five loaves of bread in your obedience when you say, God, this is what I have. God, I'm like right now, it's like I'm a I'm a stay at home, homeschooling mom, called into business in this season, back into the marketplace. And a part of me was like, I can't go hard the way others go hard in this season. When I was doing set apart start, it was like, God, I didn't have the the resources, but God made a way. And I know he's gonna make a way this time as well. And I'm saying this not only to encourage you, but also to encourage myself. So I can look back at this video and say, now did you hear what God was saying through you in that bring your two fishes and five loaves and don't be afraid to be obedient with god right where you are with what you have it reminds me of the woman who had the alabaster jar and how the scripture records how she poured her expensive port perfume on the feet of jesus and i think it was judas correct me if i'm wrong it was kind of like oh we could have like taken that perfume and sold it da, 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 da. but jesus remember i think jesus said that um like in all of let me see if I can even find it because I don't want to paraphrase, okay? Jesus and the woman with the alabaster jar. While Jesus was in Bethany, this is Matthew 26, verse 6 to 13. Love a bit of Matthew, don't we? If you watch The Chosen, I just love a bit of Matthew, you know? All the disciples are excellent in their own ways. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. 
Matthew 26, verse 6 to 13, it says, And when Jesus was in Bethany at the house of Simon, the leper, a woman came to him having an alabaster flask of very costly fragrant oil and she poured it on his head as he sat at the table oh it was on his head not his feet okay come through see that's why you need to read the bible <laughs> but when his disciples saw it, they were indignant saying why this waste for this fragrant oil might have been sold for much and given to the poor verse 10 but when jesus was aware of it he said to them to the disciples why do you trouble the woman for she has done a good work for me. 11. For you have the poor with you always, um, but me you do not always have. For in pouring this fragrant oil on my body, she did it for my burial. Assuredly, I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. And this stayed with me. And it speaks to me about being in the two fishes and five loaves because they didn't see the value of what she was bringing to Jesus to pour it on his head as now I'm reading New King James. I don't know what version I was reading or that was saying about his feet, but he, she poured this expensive perfume on Jesus and in pouring it on Jesus, even the disciples, are, they're tripping out like, what? Like could have sold this and given it to the poor it sounds noble right it sounds like a good thing to say oh i'm doing this for my business or oh, i'm doing this for the passion project god put on me but my thing is like first things first are you still reverencing christ first before the business before this before that and for me first things first i for me i really believe in the order of christ comes first followed by my family followed by everything else christ my husband my child my children i really believe in that order of the kingdom so that being said it made me feel like god but how can i do well in business in this season with my two fishes and five loads i'm a homeschooling mom i'm at home and i've i have it in here because i have the experience but I don't have the I don't have the resources of time the way I used to have it. I don't have the resources of being able to be like yeah, pick up put, pack let's go. I don't have it like that in this season because my home comes first. And for me, this encourages me because it's like they didn't see the value of her pouring that perfume on Jesus. But I really believe in me pouring my time into my family on Jesus because I believe as I serve my family, I'm serving them as unto the Lord. It may look foolishness like okay, but now she could be so much further ahead if you would just pause the family stuff and do this, 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 this. But I'm like, no, it's not one or the other. I can do both simultaneously with the grace of God. However, I have to still honor Christ. I still have to be willing to pour my expensive perfume on Christ. My expensive perfume could be my time in the season, like metaphorically speaking. I'm not saying this was time. She actually had perfume, but I'm just saying metaphorically, mine could be time. Mine could be even my headspace because you know how precious it is to give somebody your mind like your full mind like this given to christ giving jesus my mind where my thoughts run where my ideas run where my inspirations come from allowing him to shape it and to renew my mind that i believe is a type of expensive perfume if i could say that in that it may look weak like why are you giving so much time to still trying to honor god when you've got things to do you've got business to run but i think when you put him first, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be added. It doesn't mean that I'm lazy and I don't do practical things to help me in my family or to help me in my business. But it's that I don't put Christ at the back burner in order to win in business. Because what does it profit a man to gain the whole world but lose your soul? Do you see? So for me, it's like this point of number three I'm trying to drive home is don't be afraid to bring what you have in faith, knowing that Jesus has given you something and he entrusts you with it as you bring it back to him this expensive thing you have whether it be expensive creative gift in how you style or in how you do hair or it's this gift that you have of just how you can break things down with your words or how you play music and you have a musical ear and the way you can write songs like that people are struggling but you can just be in your car and you've got prophetic songs flowing through you that's an expensive gift God has given to you. And for you to pour it back onto God, even in the midst of your busy adulting, I believe God really honours that.
in your own way. It might not be the same as, as where the, you know, everywhere the gospel's preacher name is mentioned, but I believe God honours that because you have brought the best of what you have. She brought her best and she saw as Christ as worthy of having her best. So in this season, again, if you feel that way, I'm here to say, come on, let's go. You know Jesus is worthy of your time. You know the gifts he's put in you. He wants to see a return and he's putting it on you to arise. So arise, arise. Stop being fearful of what these people will say, that people will say, of what it looks like. Well, I don't have this yet, I don't have that, I don't have a website. Like, ask the Holy Spirit to connect you to the right people. Some people call them destiny helpers. Others are just called, I don't know, angels, whoever. Just ask Holy Spirit, the people that I need in my path to help me to accomplish what you've put inside of me. If this is the right time, God, show me, make it plain, make it clear, and let me walk in that freedom. I want to encourage you because I really do believe in that scripture that says that all of creation waits for the manifestation of the sons of God and daughters as well. But sons of God is talking about mankind and they're waiting for us to arise because the world is getting darker. So the children of Christ have to shine brighter. And so I'm speaking to you as a fellow person who's in Christ to say arise where God is asking you to arise. If it's in the place of pray prayer, arise. If it's in the place of showing up for your family, because first things first, you could be all out there trying to secure the bag. But God is like, but have you even looked after your child? Have you nurtured their soul? Have you connected their their hearts to my heart? Are they being trained as disciples for me? So, yeah, you're running around to collect all the coins. But how is your life at home? So maybe God is saying, sit down. Or maybe God is, and that's what your season is. So do that, please, arise in that area. But if God is saying, you've got the house, you've got the this, you've got the that, please all, we need to see the gift arise. Like, come on, I need to see the songs coming out. I need to see the, the paintings. I need to see the dances to come out. Whatever it is God has placed on you, please be obedient because you're robbing us, the body of Christ, from experiencing the fullness of Christ because I only showcase a part of Christ. You showcase another pride. And that's why the Bible talks about every joint supplies. Like every joint in the body of Christ is supplying. If I'm an elbow, but you're the shoulder and you're not in position, I can only get so far. Do you get like, I can only as an elbow move so far. But when the elbow is moving and the shoulder is moving and the hand is flowing, like it flows so well. So please just get in position. Do what God is putting on your heart to do. And I'm here in my position with my gifts of branding, marketing styling to be able to help you if it is you might not be you but the you that it's for to help you where you feel like i'm stuck nash i know it's here but i'm stuck i'm here to help with my gifts so that i can bring our gifts together so that every joint can supply so i just want to encourage you to know that if you need help in that area i'm here to help please hit me up check out my website check email me check out the dm whatever you need to do get the help you need if it's not me that is fine just go where you know you're supposed to be with the people you're supposed to be around and arise for the kingdom of god that's it <laughs>